Hello everyone, Neo Messiah giving you another video. Uh, so, Arsenal managed to scrape a 1-0 win against Watford. i got to say, it was a bit of a nervy game, but they did manage to pull out the win thanks to a goal from Emil Smith-Rowe. A very nice goal taken from Smith-Rowe. Um, i, I got to say, very impressed by him in, uh, in, in today's game and loving um, what he was doing. Started off very slow in the game overall. Um, you find he just wasn't getting a lot on the ball. And I think that a large part of that was to do with Watford. Uh, the way how Watford set up was uh, like a 4-1-4-1, which looked more like a 4-5-1 um, like overall. They weren't really trying to kind of uh, commit any players forward. But... Um, and just really was trying to stifle Arsenal, stop Arsenal from kind of playing their game to, and then hit Arsenal on the counter-attack. Uh, and to be honest, it, it almost worked um, uh, in this game because they, they did have a few half chances that just didn't quite go. One near the end where Ramsdale came rushing out, which I was wondering, like, why was he rushing out? But nevertheless, uh, Josh King just wasn't able to kind of put the ball away. Uh, but, you know, it was a game where... Apart from that, because of the tactics that Watford set up meant that Arsenal were able to be dominant throughout the game. And it meant that Watford were never really much of an attacking threat unless Arsenal allowed them to be an attacking threat. And when you look at the players that they had, um, I expected probably a little bit more from Watford. Um, I think Ismaili Assar was dealt with honestly quite reasonable um first half dealt with reasonable um with uh with Saka who I thought defended was defending really well getting back doing what he was supposed to do and then with Tavares and then um on the right side um with um uh, oh my god um Tomiyasu uh as well also helping Saka out there on that right and then when um Mo when they switch sides, both full backs just really helping out to kind of really lock up Saar. Uh, there were moments in the game whereby Saar was on the ball and Arsenal had just three players around him and I just, and there was really nothing that he could do. So Arsenal really nullifying their effects. And you got to thank Mikel Arteta for that. Like, I, 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 again, I'm one of those whereby if you do things that are good, you got to praise them. You you got to give Arteta where where credit is due. And again, Mikel Arteta keeping consistency. Like I said, in um my um quick YouTube shorts, uh about an hour before the game, talking about uh, uh Mikel Arteta keeping the consistency, uh compared to um the the previous game and the previous lineup. Um, of course, Thomas Party was injured, which meant that somebody had to come in and Maitland Niles coming in. And Maitland-Niles did exactly what I thought he would have done uh, and played very well. Solid defensively, sat back, did what he needed to do. Brang the ball out whenever he needed to, but never really got too far forward to whereby he was like much in the final thirds. Uh, but, you know, was just in that central midfield, defensive midfield role and was able to help both fullbacks out on both sides. And... That's the added advantage of having Maitland-Niles in that central midfield, especially if one day we do go to play him with like a three. Um, and Maitland-Niles proved that to everyone like I knew that he could. So a good game from him. Uh, and he was actually given man of the match um, by uh, Sky Sports, which I I would probably somewhat disagree, but I could completely understand why they would. He definitely would be classed as the unsung hero uh, because he, he did all the right things. Um, especially when you think of the fact that Thomas Party was away. I'm sure that there were fans that were going to be worried about whether Maitland-Niles would have been able to do a job in that midfield, and he was able to do so, like like I thought that he would be. And over over the course of the game, he was a, a short head. Um, obviously, wasn't able to kind of maybe take a few shots um, and get it nowhere near on target, like how maybe Thomas Party would, or you know he doesn't have the passing range. But I thought overall he provides you what you needed um, in a side. So uh, for me, well done to uh, Ainsley Maitland-Niles uh, there for that. Now let's talk about everybody else because I think that um, that's what it's it's really all about. So from the back, I, I would have said that if we're talking match ratings, um, I thought that 
Ramsdale would have given a seven. I thought he had a solid game once again. Um, no world class moments from him uh, in this game, but again, you know that the kind of saves that he was making last week against Leicester, you kind of can't expect that every single week. But I think that Watford didn't show any real um, threat to his goal to whereby he needed to do those type of things. So uh, for me, I would have given him a solid seven. Good game. Um, assured did what he needed to do as a goalkeeper, uh, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, at right back, Tomiyasu, I thought overall was very good. Picked up a yellow card earlier on in the game, but still managed to uh, maintain that. Didn't make any silly fouls. I think thought was uh, solid defensively. And when I'm looking online on like Sofa Score, they gave him a 7.6, which uh, he is level with Ainsley Maitland Niles as uh, as being um, one of the the best players on the pitch um, for Arsenal today. So. Well done to uh, Tomiyasu. I, I thought he had a good, solid game and dealt with anything that was really coming on that Watford left. Um, I think first half is a mixture between Saar and Emmanuel Dennis. Two players that I actually thought, you know, would be good for Arsenal and just didn't... They just wasn't there. So um, I, now I can see why Arsenal have never really shown much interest in them. So um, well done to Tomiyasu. Ben White, I thought, was very, very good today. Um, he had a big hand in the goal with uh, Smithrow. Uh, and I thought that him driving the ball forward, I thought, was very good. Defensively, I thought, again, he was solid. Uh, and you know what? Now that we're, we've are we played 11 games, I would say that he has slowly improved as, as, uh, as the games have gone on. Um, I think at the beginning, I thought this guy defensively was challenged. And... Um, now that we're 11 games in, and I think he's pretty solid defensively. Especially, and I think a large part to do with that is the likes of Gabriel playing next to him and Tomiyasu playing also next to him as well, means that he's always in a position whereby he's doing absolutely fine um, in, a, in a defensive nature. So, well done to him for that. Gabriel doing what Gabriel does. Um, what can I say? He's a sentinel. Just deals with anything that comes his way. Just shut down City. Um, nothing that uh, really Watford could kind of do um, on, on top of that. A few little hairy moments with some of the physicality that was it was in the game. You could tell that Watford really wanted to kind of get Arsenal carded up. Potentially make some silly mistakes. But Gabriel wasn't really facing him. Um, Tavares. I got a bit of a big, big shout out to Tavares. I thought he was very good today uh, in today's game. Just his ability to drive the ball forward and try to create chances for Arsenal. Did lose the ball quite a bit because he has this thing whereby like he will take the ball and he'll try to push it forward and then use his speed to run on it and to be able to outpace um, the defending players that he might be going up against. Um, but uh, apart from a few of those, I thought he played pretty well. I know on Sofa scored gave him a 6.8. And I'm trying to see why that is. And honestly, for me, I, I can't... The only thing I can see is he did lose possession quite a bit. Um, 18 times uh, he lost possession. Uh, and so for score, gave him a 6.8. But for me, I would have given him the same type of scores as I would have given the likes of Gabriel, Ben White and Tomiyasu. I thought very, very good um, from them uh, as well. Uh, so for me, I thought the whole defensive line did incredibly well. The midfield, obviously, I've talked about ANC Maitland now has been very good. Sambi as well, um, being good as well. Now with Thomas Party there, um, starting the game, you kind of expect him to be the driving force of creativity, and he did that. And he also made it solid defensively as well um, to kind of help out the attacking players ahead of him. So I thought he did well. Saka, I thought his overall game was okay. Defensively, shut down, uh, like, caused nothing but problems for Danny Rose um, in the first half. Um, and defensively, I thought he was uh, pretty solid and got back and defended. But again, it's another game whereby he didn't get an assist. And attacking-wise, I'm not seeing much from him there. Um, I actually expected the Saka substitution to come a lot earlier um, to maybe give Pepe or Martinelli who came on at the 90th bloody minute 
and it just pisses me off every single game that I see. That like, what is the point? What are you bringing him on in the 90th minute for? Like, really? So, Saka comes off in like the 90th minute for um for Gabriel Martinelli. Um, but I would have liked to see Martinelli come on maybe closer to about the 65th or 70th minute to give him a chance. I I, I don't think Saka was really bad um, in the game, but I don't think that he was what I would have liked him to see. He did have a goal ruled out offside, um, and maybe he should have Saka should have been in a, a better position uh, for that. But um, yeah, I thought overall he was pretty pretty good um, in the game. Silver score actually gave him a 7.4 uh, overall. He actually lost the ball as well quite a lot. 19 times he, he lost the ball. But I think with him, it's because of his defensive work, his uh, his crosses uh, that really kind of um, allowed his game to shine. But when it came for on the attacking side, I thought Saka was um, non-existent on the, on the attacking side. Um, so for me, I probably would have given him something like a six. Smith Rowe for me, he'd have probably been one of my joint man of the matches with Ainsley Maitland Niles. Uh, I, 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 I thought he was good today. Started off slow, but he was the difference maker. And I know that you could say that all he did was score a goal, but the guy scored a goal and Arsenal only scored one goal out of the game. Um, so you got to say that well done to Smith Rowe for that, um, for scoring the goal. So for me, I'd have given him and Maitland Niles my joint man of the match. Um, right behind them, I would have given Lacazette, who for me, again, just just very good work rate, drifting out wide to help Saka out where needed be, was out wide trying to cross the ball wherever needed be. For me, he was just as good as some of the defenders. Again, that level of consistency from him, I'm loving uh, from... Uh, from Lacazette, uh, and it's going to be interesting what the what the club does in order to kind of replace him. I'm hearing talks about um, the the guy that plays at um, Fiorentina. No, um, is what I'd clearly like to say. Uh, I, Sixty mil on a 21, 22 year old. When we have a bunch of young strikers, I, I mean, I'll talk about it later on. But no, 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 no. Like, this is where Arteta might want to change the way in which he wants to play, which is might be different from this 4-4-2. But I do think we need an option to whereby we have somebody that could play like Lacazette, that has his work rate, that can also be a goal threat as well, because that's something that we'll also lose. Um, but for me, you know, even though that's the future, I'm loving what I saw from Lacazette today. So well done to him. And... Finally, there's a Bamiyang who I gotta say, um, not a great game. Um, again, similar to Saka in that, you know, he was there. Um, he tracked back. He played out wide. He did what he needed to do, but he had opportunities to score. And that first touch for the goal that Saka scored, that was ruled offside for me. A Bamiyang should have dealt with that and and put that ball away for himself to make it two 0 to re- relieve a lot of that pressure from Arsenal. Uh, but he didn't. Then he gets the penalty and um, it saved. It just didn't look quite as confident. It was too too near the middle. Um, again, a predictable p- penalty. So I mark him down with that. Again, not scoring a goal in open play. I'm going to mark him down on that. And I'm going to half kind of mark him down on the goal that Odegaard looked like. It looked like it was going in, but I think that... um. Maybe it would have needed a tap, like a tapping from a player. And even though Aubameyang did get the ball in the back of the net, Aubameyang was ruled offside. So again, positional play, not great from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And um, overall, I'd probably say he was he was the worst one. Um, and I probably would have given him like a four or something like that um, overall for me. So um, for me, a pretty poor game from, from, from Aubameyang. But... You know what? He'll bounce back. I think if we had a better depth in the side, I think if uh, Mikel Arteta was a bit braver, maybe he would have bring on um, Eddie Nketiah uh, to to be someone. But um, hey, you know what? In Nketiah looks like he, he's he's off, so it's um it's a shutdown for him. He, he's in the doghouse. 
uh, permanently until um, he gets a move. But Mikel Arteta, so I saw a stat on Sky Sports that this is his 100th game in charge and that he actually has a better win ratio to Arsene Wenger, which I was surprised about, which uh, was also said that Arsenal fans would be surprised about as well. So i got to say that, well done for Mikel Arteta for getting the win. i got to say that he has definitely surprised me. Not surprised me in terms of what this side is capable of, but surprised me in terms of his stubbornness that which he'd shown for a lot of last season and refusing to adapt to the players um strengths and now he's adapted to that the pressure is is off i think it's it's rightfully so to say the pressure is off and he's found a way to get the best out of his players even though it's probably not the way in which he wants to play which i think is probably closer to the way in which um pep guardiola has his side now with basically like a false nine, four, three, three, and you have forward players and midfield players able to interchange with one another, whereby it makes it almost impossible for other teams to be able to try and defend against. And I'm loving his ability to be able to assess all of this and be able to kind of adapt to the players. And I think that due to the fact that he's able to do this means that he's going to be a success. And even though he's not the guy I would have chosen, he's able to adapt to the players and get the win, which I'm telling you this right now for every Arsenal fan out there, even though you might be Arteta out or in, at the end of the day, please be happy with the fact that we won the game. That's the most important thing. We won the game and we're winning games. So be happy about that. And I just got to say that let it all continue. Uh, we all know who's next in Liverpool and they're about to be a hard side. I've actually got the Liverpool game on TV now against West Ham and um, you know it's it's going to be a, a tough one even though Liverpool are now behind. Spoiler alert, sorry uh, if, you, if you're watching this and aren't watching that game. But um, yeah, let's Arsenal fans be happy about the win. You know, let's take this on to the next one and who knows, miracles can happen. You know, there, there was once a guy... But 2,000 years ago, that walked on water. So um, a miracle could happen um, after the the um, international break and we could beat Liverpool. So definitely leave your comments below on what you think of the game. Um, please do remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, that's up the Arsenal. And let's uh, keep going. But until then, I'll see you all on my next video where there will be a link in the description below.